we'll see that there's no power at all. This one's another one that's completely dead. So we'll pull the back off this set and see what's going on with it. Okay, we'll get the Sharp TV all apart. We've got no power. So we're going to check for our standby voltages coming off the power supply here. There's our connectors here going onto the, onto the signal board. So somewhere in here we're going to have to have some type of a standby voltage on one of these pins. Got the meter hooked up here. We're just going to measure and see whether, whether we have a standby voltage. I don't hear any relays clicking, no nothing on this set. Which tells me that we have a problem on the power supply in the standby uh, circuit. And that's why it's not working. Get some little more light on here. See what I'm doing. And uh, move the camera kind of out of the way. But we're just going to start measuring here. I am plugged in. I am plugged into a uh, into an isolated power supply. First thing we'll do is we'll just check to make sure that we've got AC getting to the set, which we do. Fuse is not blown. So we know there's power coming into the set. So now I'm just going to go and I'm going to check for any voltages on the standby. Now you'll notice that while I'm doing this, I only have one hand near the TV. So even if I were to make contact with a hot uh, circuit, I wouldn't get a shock. But uh, I see nothing. I'm looking at all the voltages here. And I don't see anything on here. We'll just... Uh, unplug the power supply from the board and just take a look, take a gander at the uh, pins without any load on them just in case we have something loading the set down okay it looks like the standby voltage is derived off of uh, panel 5 volts unregulated six nothing nothing there unregulated six has nothing unregulated 18 there's nothing here so th this power supply is not working at all um, yeah, there's no voltages on any of these pins I would expect to see like a 5 volt supply somewhere along the lines. We have nothing. So I'm going to pull this board. Actually this board looks like somebody may have been working on it in the past because there's screws missing. There's a screw down here that someone hasn't put back in. So I think someone's been into this TV before and uh, maybe condemned it or done something to it. But let's uh, pull the power supply out and just take a look at it a little closer and see whether we can see if there's something obvious that's wrong with it. Now I want to power this unit up on my bench outside of the television. And I'm always concerned that you know there could be little stray scraps of wire and stuff on here that could cause a short and really could ruin our day. So whenever you work on a power supply, when you're going to put the board down on a bench, throw a piece of paper underneath it. That provides you a layer of insulation so that if there's anything, any little clippings of wire or any little flecks of solder or anything on here, it's not going to uh, cause a short and ruin or cause more damage to the device under test. These power supplies are very dangerous to work on. If you don't know what you're doing, my advice is keep your fingers out of an energized power supply such as this one because these ones here have a couple big caps on them, namely these ones right down here and these are rated 560 microfarads I think they're 250 or 350 volts each this is going to operate in a, a voltage doubler arrangement so the 120 volts coming in is going to be doubled it's going to be at least 250 volts maybe 320 um, across these two with respect to the ground um, so you gotta watch out they can bite they'll hold a charge for a few minutes after you remove power they do have resistors across them that will drain the power once you remove the power but when it's energized these are going to have a, a lot of voltage on them so you gotta really keep 
might be mindful of that. That's why the extra layer of insulation is going down here before I power this up. Because I need to test to see that this oscillator here is running for the small uh, power supply, the standby power supply. Now right now I'm safe because my bench power is turned off. <clears throat> as soon as I make that hot though, then uh, I'll be following all safety procedures for working around a switching power supply. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my meter out. I'm going to get a ground clip on here so that I can clip it on to the ground side and then I can probe with the positive lead and look for if we've got any voltage coming off of here, if we've got any voltage going in, etc, etc. So I suspect we're probably going to have something in this circuit here is where our problem is going to be. This is our standby supply. Without the standby supply running, the main supply is never going to turn on and then we won't have any TV. So this, this circuit here, this is what controls the, uh, the remote control circuit and so forth of the set to uh, allow us to watch TV. So we'll just clip our ground probe on here and turn on the power and start checking for some voltages. Maybe look for the, maybe even hook my scope up here. See whether the oscillator is running here. So now we're hot. Okay, now we've got uh, minus 31 volts here. This is the hot side though, so I have to actually use the hot ground for a reference on this side of the power supply, but we know that we're energized. We've got nothing on this side, so the oscillator is definitely not running. going to check a few of these caps for high ESR, because well, that one will definitely cause it not to start. That's uh, looks like that one might be the soft start. That's the capacitor that charges up initially and gives it a kick to start it running. Looking back at the set, it's not a voltage doubler. These capacitors are actually in parallels, but it's still going to be a very high voltage. It's still going to be probably about 170 volts. I'll show you what I mean, okay? We'll just put the uh, meter on here and I'll put on the power. There we go, 181 volts. So you want to keep your fingers out of this area in here when this set is energized because it can give you a nasty kick. And you'll notice after I've removed the power, it still takes a few minutes for the voltage to drain off because there's no load. Our power supply is not running, our oscillator is not running, so there's nothing to drain that power away. So now I'm just checking to make sure that I actually have my primary voltages are actually making it to this side of the circuit. There's my input right there on my transformer. So when I power it up, these have got full B+, plus, right? This oscillator is not running. And that comes back to this IC here, this little I, this one little pin of the IC here. This is the, it's like the collector, It'd be a transistor probably just in there. Just a, it's just an oscillator or an output IC. Um, it might be this IC that's failed or something in the circuitry that, that controls it. So we're gonna probably have to bring the, well, we might have to bring the scope out on this one just for, for doing some testing, but I've just been, just been poking around here doing some preliminary measurements and we do have power over to the transformer and we do have power to the, uh, the uh, output IC here. I'm just gonna look around and make sure that we don't have a broken solder connection or something in here that's uh, preventing it from starting. In fact, that one there looks like it might even be a bit questionable. But uh, we're gonna just take a close look at the board here and see if there's any uh, connections that are causing the problem. Uh, the capacitor that I, I thought at first might be uh, problematic is not measuring bad with the ESR tester. It's actually measuring very good. So I don't think that's the issue. We've got another problem somewhere here in the in the uh, in the standby supply, and it could be it could be this IC here that's bad. That might be the problem right there. So I'm just gonna check a diode down here. Uh, let's see if this one's okay or not. Oh, 0.65. I think this diode might be bad. D7907 is right down here. I'll show you where it mounts. I've already clipped it out. See it? Little post down here. I've already cut one side off and the diode is shorted as you will see. Okay, we're back working on the Sharp again. I've got a new replacement diode here. The diode that has failed 
It's a 150 volt, 5 uh, watt Zener diode. Now if we remember the old diode, which I have here, if we look at the readings of the old diode, you will see that it's shorted. See that? 0 0.063 is our drop, but it does it in both directions. The diode is shorted. A good diode looks like this. In one direction, with your negative on your cathode, you're going to have about a 0.6, in this case 0 0.624 volts drop. That's a standard drop across the junction of a diode. You turn the diode around the other direction, it's infinite resistance. So here's our new diode. We're going to mount this diode on the power supply of the set. It's a 150 volt 5 watt Zener diode. Its part number is 1N5383 and the location of it is D7907. It's right here. I'll just zoom the camera in on the board. I think I showed you before but we're going to mount this we're going to mount this new diode in here and see if that fixes our standby supply. The board is clearly marked which way the diode goes in cathodes to the right. You can see the markings on the board. We're going to just heat this thing up and drop this new diode in here and hopefully that will get this working and that there won't be anything else wrong with the set and we can get this one back up and running again. So now I can put the new part in. This being a high power device, we make sure we get a good um, solder connection here. Get lots of solder into that uh, standoff there to make sure that we do have a good solid connection. Because this is a 5 watt dissipating diode, so it's going to dissipate a fair bit of power, which means it's going to get warm. So now we've replaced the diode. We'll get our little insulation paper here back on the bench because I don't want any little scraps of wire or solder or anything that's on the bench here causing a short. And now we can once again plug in to our power supply. And we're going to check for our standby voltage. And we should get a standby voltage on one of the pins over here. So we'll turn our meter on to voltage mode and ground. So any of these terminals here will, will function as a ground. So we'll hook up our ground and some of these are going to be power. Put on our power here and we'll measure for voltage. See if we've got a standby voltage on any of these. Okay, I got three volts here. So we, we know that we've got something going on here. There's our five volt supply right there. You see that? We have five volts on here. We have three volts on that pin there. But there's our five volt supply. So now we know that the problem was a shorted Zener diode, this one here, 150 volt. And for all the people out there that are concerned about safety, no, I'm not touching the fucking part. I'm not any, anywhere close to the part. My finger is resting on the heat sink. The power is off. So just get your shit out of an uproar, okay? For all you people that want to flame me saying that I'm not a safe worker. I'm a very safe worker. Okay, I don't take chances on this job or any other. And I really don't appreciate some other people that think that they know more than me on electronics trying to tell me that I'm endangering people's lives. I think anybody with any common sense knows that if they're going to be working on electronics that there's always a risk that they're going to take of getting a shock. Uh, I try to, de try to demonstrate and repair these things using safe procedures. My bench is isolated. I'm wearing rubber sole shoes and I never have my second hand anywhere near something that could get me to complete a path to ground, okay? I can touch a live circuit with one hand. I'm on an insulator, I'm wearing rubber sole shoes. Even if this was charged, I could touch it with one hand. As long as my other hand is not making contact with a, a, a path to ground, I'm not gonna get a shock because I've got one asshole out there that's harassing me 
encouraging people not to watch my videos and uh, is asking for them to be taken down because uh, he's in the business of repairing electronics and maybe he feels that me providing free advice to people is going to discourage people from visiting his business and spending their hard-earned dollars getting their electronics fixed that they can really if you've got an interest in electronics you can do it yourself it's just that simple I walk into this set here I've never worked on all of these sets before and um, it doesn't take long to find the part if you follow troubleshooting procedures troubleshooting procedures let's get this board back in this TV and see if it fixes it so we'll remount the board making sure that we uh, get all the grounding screws in Oops, those are the most important ones are these screws that have got the grounding tabs on they provide the safety ground even though there is I'm sure there are grounded pins in the connectors uh, these ones here bond the board to the metal chassis okay all the screws are in place we'll just reconnect the power connectors for the lamp drivers and the main board got our power cord here somewhere plug in our power hook up a signal to it turn it around and turn it on grab a cable for signal so we'll hook up a cable to it turn this set around turn on the power and there should be a power button on this thing I got a green light on here which is a good start oh I see something I have a screen lit up that says LaserDisc Auto TV we got a picture we have a picture we have fixed another one of these TVs and this one wasn't this one wasn't caused by capacitors I don't want to leave this thing on here for more than a few seconds because we all know what's going to happen if I leave that thing turned on for any length of time I'm going to have you know the uh, professional golf association is going to be clamping down on me saying I'm violating their copyright so we'll uh, go down to some of my stuff here I don't know if I got to probably can't get all of my channels this is set for cable but I can certainly get that whoops that's coming from one of my in-house systems we'll see if we get sound on here we have sound and everything's working that would be the yellow jackets performing just for clarification off of YouTube uh, anyway there we go we have fixed another one hope you enjoyed this one I think it was probably a little more informative than all those other ones with just bad caps because everybody knows if you find caps that are bulging they're bad um, you can find caps that aren't bulging and be bad and uh, that becomes a little more challenging where you've got to get in there with your ESR meter in this case this was a solid state component that was bad on here a 150 volt 5 watt Zener diode hope you enjoyed this one catch you later